So, radical forgiveness it can totally change your life and your energy. When I started radical forgiveness, I had so many things to forgive. I was like mad all the time, and, and you know, don't talk to me. And look at me now, all because of radical forgiveness. I was in a group that, um, that did radical forgiveness for six months, and then we did radical manifestation for six months, for three years. And the miracles that happened, you just could not believe. So I want to give you guys that gift too. Yeah? And you guys know. So, Radical Forgiveness. It was um, developed by Colin Tipping, who is now transitioned. And, and what was kind of ironic about uh, Colin is he developed it as a um, treatment for cancer because cancer patients were th th thought to be people who hadn't forgiven. And guess what he died from? Cancer. Cancer. And he wrote a book saying yes to cancer. So he, he analyzed all that. He's a really good guy and his wife Joanne's still on the planet. So here we go. Radical Forgiveness. Although God, or whatever you want to call the higher power, uh, does not forgive, her love is nevertheless the basis of forgiveness. Fear condemns and love forgives. Fear condemns and uh, forgiveness thus undoes what we fear has produced. What the, yeah, returning to the mind, the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It's the means by which illusions disappear. And that's from The Course in Miracles. A lot of this work is based on The Course in Miracles. So if you're familiar with The Course, this will uh, ring a bell with you. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so what it is is a shift in perception. Seen from the spiritual big picture, whatever occurred was meant to occur for my growth, and my higher self called it forth. Therefore, nothing bad happened, so there's nothing to forgive. The nothing to forgive is, is someplace you really do get in the end if you do enough of the work. It's all just a, an opportunity for you to learn and grow and become better than you were before it happened. Certainly, ha that's how it worked with me. But the co even cooler thing is, is that willingness is what makes it work. It's easy. It's not therapy. It's a therapy-free process. It's instantaneous. It's simple step by step. And no belief is required. All that's required is a tiny kernel of willingness. And the fact that you're in this room, you've got that kernel and more. So. Be skeptical, believe nothing. You have nothing to lose but your victim story. Mm -hmm. And this is all about there's, you have victim perspective and then you have the spiritual perspective. And you get to pick which one you want to do. You just need to be willing to be willing to be willing. So there's the <clears throat> three kinds of forgiveness we're going to talk about today. The first kind is traditional forgiveness. And in traditional forgiveness, there's a bad guy and a good guy. And you're just so good that you say, I'll forgive you. But you still know they're bad and they did something wrong and all that. Then there's extraordinary forgiveness where the desire to forgive and the need to condemn is equal and they can just forgive somebody who did something terrible to them and then Oprah invites you to be interviewed. That's how rare that is. So some people can do that, but you can't count on that. <clears throat> In radical forgiveness, forgiveness, you see the truth double. There's a world of humanity side where there's human law. People need to be held accountable. People are responsible. And this is traditional forgiveness primarily that comes through this lens. It's a small picture. And if you're into Course in Miracles, you know it's just an illusion. It's just a story. Then the truth is the world of spirit. Spiritual law, surrender, integrity, and radical forgiveness. In in this, we have to see through double, see through both lines at the same time. It's not that what the, the thing that happened, the bad thing, never happened. It happened, and it hurt, and it wasn't good, and it wasn't easy. But we surrender to spirit that there's something, there's a gift in there for us, and get prepared to receive that gift. That's the, that's, that's the stuff that kicks butt. So we have defense mechanisms. The first one is denial, and in denial, you pretend nothing happened at all. You suspend belief. It's like, it's like I can't believe that happened. Um, totally forget about it. And what's, what it's primary, primarily for is to get you through that moment when, when everything's hitting the wall. Because you're on overload. But if you, if you don't get out of it, then it can go into repression. Repression is when we bury your feelings, unpleasant thoughts, memories deep down, 
So you have absolutely no awareness of them being there. I remember when I was in college, I learned that Freud stuff. I'm like, oh my God, things happened to me, and I, never, I don't even remember it. That really scared me. Um, but I've gotten over it. <laughs> and it. So it's as if we ne it never happened, but it's still going to impact you. It's still going to impact everything you do. You just don't know why or what. There's also suppression, which is different from repression in that we haven't buried the thoughts. We, we know that something happened. Um, my daughter had a, was a victim of a crime, and she used to periodically ask me when she was young, Mom, tell me what happened. <laughs> no, honey, I wasn't there. If you don't remember now, you don't need to. <laughs> so you bury it, but you know it's there. How many have done that by, with anything? Hey. Then there's projection. This is the best defense mechanism that's around. You, it's the most popular. And what you do is, when something's going on, there's a human need to blame somebody. Something bad happens, somebody has got to be at fault. And the last thing we want it to be is ourselves. So we throw it out on somebody else, and we get all righteous, and think that they're awful and we're wonderful. There's also another perspective, and this is from the Course. This says, <clears throat> what you project or extend is up to you, but it's not up to you to decide whether to utilize projection. It's a law of mind. Perception is projection. To perceive something, we look first inside, and then we choose the guide for seeing, and then we look out. So the first place we look is inside. If something bad happens, we look inside. Somebody's got to be blamed. I know it's going to be them. You get to choose subconsciously. So here's an example of that. For some reason, my body disappeared. You have to imagine that those lines are there. They disappeared <laughs> just today. So, <clears throat> so we all have the cool things about people, about ourselves, and then the uncool things, right? <clears throat> it's cool to be nice. It's cool to be helpful. Compliant. I don't know about that. I never got that one. <laughs> Hardworking. And then on the other side, the uncool thing, mean people. Oh, I never liked those people. Cruel people. Oh, not those either. Lazy people. Mm. Then there's nuisance if somebody bugs you. Then there's the really bad, bad, bad people. The criminals, the murderers, the pedophiles. And those are, that's all on the uncool side. And that becomes our shadow. So when we run into our shadow, we get to use projection and we look inside and we see that, and we find somebody else to have it besides us. I'll give you an example. Call the hill meanness. This is a person standing here with a bunch of meanness behind. That's me. I, didn't, I don't like mean people. And uh, so I, don't, I put my own mean stuff, self, back here. Oh, no, I'm not that. I'm not mean. And I called in this boss, Jerry Keen. He was mean. He was really mean. And he would lie all the time. Oh, man, he was a great born to project on. So I would look at him. And I had this minister at a unity church I went to. He would say, when you got triggered, you'd say, oh, goody, a chance to heal. And I remember thinking, Shh, yeah, right. I won't tell you the expletives that I thought in my brain, but I didn't know. You spot it, you got it. Colin taught me. Anything you see in somebody else? It's got to be in you or you wouldn't even see it. You spot it, you got it. It's a mirror. When I look at somebody else and, and I see, the, and I learned also too that the, the good stuff is a mirror too. Like Mother Teresa, she sees, sees everybody as God. I got that too because I can see that in her. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so there's this big long story and if you come to the workshop you would see, you would hear the whole story but I'm just going to do a summary because we've got a short time. <clears throat> so this was Colin's sister. And when she was young, her father was not very loving towards her. And her mom said, don't worry, he doesn't know how to love anybody. So she took that as, okay, well, then I won't feel bad. But then Collins had a daughter named Lorraine who came to Grandpa and led him around like he was a puppy. Come, Grandpa, come see this flower. Come over here. And he was so loving to Lorraine. Guess what she said to herself? That he, did, he doesn't love, he can love, he just doesn't love me. And she was back, right back on that train. So the universe loves us so much that it gave her chances to heal. She married this dude named Henry. And he was a woman chaser, a womanizer. He was looking for love every place but home. 
And first, she thought, I'm not enough. Then she, second, she finds out he's running around again, I'm not enough. And the third, I will never be enough. And they got a divorce. So she didn't heal it. Then she goes and she marries Jeff. And Jeff's a nice guy. Oh, they're, they're just getting along so well. And things are going really well until his daughter, also named Lorraine, her husband died. And they formed, formed a bond that was you know, kind of nice at first. He was really supporting her. But then she was getting freaked out because the two of them would be whispering in corners. And he was spending so much time with her. And he, she arrived at uh, Colin's house visiting from England and said, I think we're going to have to get a divorce. This has just gotten awful. And <clears throat> Colin did radical forgiveness with her. And she went home. And it was all over. He, he quit being like that with his daughter. She didn't talk to him about it or anything. It just kind of went away because she didn't need it anymore, according to this theory. And, and in my, my group with the three years off and on, there were so many miracles. Cancer disappeared. I, I had a house that went into foreclosure. It was two weeks from when it was gonna, they were going to auction it. The White House called up and said, the president said to look into your mortgage. And that was the end of that. Anyway, there's miracles upon miracles upon miracles. So here is how it works. When you're young, you have a wound, like, like the sister did. Dad doesn't love me. But this is, this is a different story. In this story, <clears throat> um, a, a person, a boy's mom and dad got divorced, and the mom left. And when you're a kid, you don't say, that's dad's fault or mom's fault. Guess who he blamed? Himself. And then you, you start to tell yourself a story like, no woman will ever love me. Women will always betray me. There's something wrong with me. I'm not lovable. And you call in all those experiences to, to help you heal. So that each time, this, this person the, was divorced, then the girlfriend abandoned him, and that was painful. The wife divorced him, that was painful. Business partner ran off with the money, that was painful. And then someone didn't show up in time for lunch and boom, explosion. <laughs> when you see something happening that's beyond reason, this is a good indicator that you get to say, oh good, he had a chance to heal, like Jim Lee used to tell us. So if you now do radical forgiveness, you can prevent the second one from leaving you. The patterns, and, uh, the patterns don't need to keep repeating. Has anybody ever hurt, healed something and have it stop? We're just new to everybody. Oh, so exciting. I hope you come to the workshop, because I'm doing a rush job through this, just to give you an idea. So really, it's like a tapestry. On the, the other side of the tapestry, it looks awful. You've got the partner ripping him off. You've got the wife leaving, the girlfriend leaving. But if you turned it over, you would see a beautiful scene. And we just can't see the scene quite yet. So here's the steps. Uh, the first step is to tell the story. And it's really important, important that you get totally into your victimhood. You know, they've done me wrong. You can call them names. Because all that stuff's living in your body, and this is a way to get it out. And so when you tell the story, you have to be honest and, and not pretty. You don't have to be the good child. You're going to be the one that, ha that really got hurt. And then you feel all those feelings. They represent your authentic power. I'm calling you to say, if you can't feel it, you if you don't feel it, you can't heal it. If you don't feel it, you can't heal it. Uh, I got really good about not feeling things, so that's been a big project for me. I'm still on it. Then collapsing the story. Uh, in collapsing the story, remember the, there was a kid that his, his parents divorced, right? What really happened in there? The only thing that really happened is his parents got a divorce. All those things he made up about it, the woman will never love me, and there's something wrong with me, and blah, blah, blah. That's not true. That's the story that he made up. So collapsing the story, you can sort out what was the true fact. And it, it hurt, whatever it was. It's not that it didn't happen. It's not that it wasn't bad. But all the rest of that stuff is. Then we reframe the story. We replace it with a story that, that suits us better. Um, I have a mentor whose parents lived internationally. And they moved every six months a year from one country to another. And she was telling herself that it ruined her life. She, nothing was permanent. She didn't need to make good friends because they were only going to be gone in a year and all that, right? So she got into the reframe thing, and she reframed it to 
I learned how to make friends. I learned how to connect with people that I hardly know. And, and on and on and that. Which one's true? Both of them and neither one of them. Which one is going to make your life better? The gifts, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're not denying that the bad stuff happened, but we are reframing its impact on us. Any questions? OK. Then integration is really important. And when you do radical forgiveness, you've got worksheets in your little packet. Looks like this. And this writes out the steps for you. And when you complete this worksheet, you write everything out and you say it out loud. That's the integration part, where you really get it out of your body and into your body and really have it be a part of who you are. We're going to go through and we're going to do one together. Thank you. OK, so it's essential that you don't skip any step, because they're all there for a darn good reason, especially number two. Why? Because if you don't feel it, you can't heal it. And so that's a really important step. You begin with your victim story. And remember, you may get really victim-y. Don't try to be nice. Don't try to be spiritual. Then you have to recognize and uh, accept your own judgments. You know, that's, that's the way I feel about that person, that so-and-so, blah, 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 who did that, blah, blah, blah. And it's OK that you felt that. Feel the feelings. And then you're going to proceed to the spiritual perspective. So. We need to choose a situation. We're going to do, I wanted to get you guys an experience going through a worksheet, but we don't have enough time for everybody to do a real issue in their own personal life. So I would like to do a world issue, like the Ukraine or, or inflation or whatever. So I would like suggestions from the crowd on a good thing that we can all forgive. How about the Supreme Court? <laughs> Everybody up for that? The Supreme yeah. Court? Okay, so we're going to forgive this. So, have you got a pencil? At the top of your worksheet, you're going to write Supreme Court. My mouth is so dry. It's hard to talk, you guys. Oh, that would be great. Write the name of the person or entity on the top of your worksheet. And the date today is, is it the, is the second? July 2nd. No, July 2nd. Took them all out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And then you're going to go to box one. And in box one, you're going to tell, tell your story. And you'll get a chance to have it heard because you're going to tell it to a partner. It's a first step in letting go, releasing victimhood. You need to own it fully. And someone's going to listen to it and honor your truth. When you're doing the worksheet on your own, there's no active person listening, but you're listening yourself. And what Colin says to do to fully integrate is you say it out loud, even if you're sub-vocalizing. And if you're in the coffee shop, you just move your lips. Think it. <laughs> OK? So go ahead now in that box. And that box is not big enough for a real story. So if you turn your page over, you'll see there's a whole blank page after that for you to continue. OK, now step 2A. I'm upset with you, Supreme Court, because, and now you're going you're gonna to be talking directly to the Supreme Court, and you're going to tell the Supreme Court what they've done that you're upset about. So, and, and this is another time, don't hold back anything. Get, get all that in there. You, so now, the next one we're going to do is feel the feelings. And in the next box, box 2B, it says, to be or not to be. It says, because of what you did, this is how I felt. And you're going to make a list of the feelings. So you're not going to tell the story anymore. You're going to say, I feel like unsafe. I feel mad. I feel. So you make a list, because we're going to use these words later. OK? So write down on your own. Write down your list of feelings. And then, of course, you're going to tell them to your partner afterwards. So go. Get to writing. And stop. Pens down. <laughs> Pens down. OK, this is the way that people access their pain. When, when Colin was working with his, his sister, the time, point when she started crying, he knew that she was ready to heal. Because getting in touch with your feelings is the first step, the window towards opening up. When you've got all that stuff held in, it's pretty difficult to heal anything. OK, so now we're going to say some affirmations. And we'll, you're going to read them from there. And next to the box, there's a thing that's next to the affirmation, there's a box that says willing, open, skeptical, and unwilling. You're going to put a check uh, on your level of willingness. And remember, you only need the smallest little 
tinge of willingness to, to make this work. So you don't need to hold back. If you think it's a bunch of malarkey, then say it. I, I don't, this isn't working for me. Our willingness to heal, that's what is. What is it? <laughs> We're going to say these affirmations, and whatever the affirmation is, that's what you're going to check. But is it willing to accept your feelings or willing to let go of them? Willing to, whatever the statement is. So I own my feelings. No one can make me feel anything. If you really think they made me feel mad, I, you, I'm blaming them, right? You don't agree with the statement, then you check they're skeptical or you're unwilling, and that's okay. Does that make sense now? Let's read this together, and then, then you're going to say out loud, I am, and you're going to say your level of willingness. I, ready? I lovingly recognize and accept my feelings and judge them no more. I'm entitled to my feelings. And then I am, check your level of willingness and say it out loud. I am willing. Perfect. Number four, I own my feelings. No one can make me feel anything. My feelings are a reflection on how I see the situation. Check and read aloud your level of willingness. I am willing. Willing, willing to feel my feelings? Is that what yeah. I'm Yeah. To own them. Or own them. I am, yeah. I am open. <laughs> made you feel that way. So you're going to make at least four or five of those statements. So write them out. Okay, three, two, one. Yay, we didn't even the halves. Okay, what I want you to do now is to turn to your partner and read your judgments out loud. They were blah, blank, and they should be blank. I will. Go. Okay, three, two, and one. Oh, you're excellent. Now, when you're doing a real personal issue, I would never rush you through any of these steps. Ask people that have worked with me, and we'll yeah. take six hours if that's what it takes, because you need to get all this out of your system. We're just learning. This is the purpose of this is to learn how to do it. So now here comes the trick. Are oh, you guys finishing up? Sorry. Here's the trick. You're going to change the Supreme Court to I. I am blank. I should be blank. And th this will help you to see the projection. How much of the, what they're doing have you never done? So go ahead now and oh. write it out. I am blank, whatever you've got. I should yeah. be blank. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do. Okay, collapsing the story. This is where we make a conscious choice to withdraw our energy from the story and begin to realize the story is mostly our interpretation about it. So in this situation with the Supreme Court, what is the absolute truth with no, um, just the facts, man. Like, um, What's his name? Just the facts. Just the facts. Yeah. The, the <laughs> Sergeant Friday or somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the facts. Dragnet. Dragnet. That's it. So what are, what are the facts of the Supreme Court? With no interpretation, no descriptive adjectives, just what did they do? Okay. Now here comes, here comes the hard part. And um, sometimes it can be really hard. I have, a, I have an ex-husband that abused our daughter. And... I was doing this worksheet on him, and CPS wouldn't even interview him because we were getting a divorce. They said I lied. They said my daughter lied. And, and so when it came down to the part that's not the truth, I had to call up my mentor and say, Sheila, you know, <laughs> you know it's all true, because they said it was all a lie, right? So just do the best you can. Don't, don't overthink. And that, that's why in this issue, it's not going to be too hard, but in your deeper issues, persist on it because in the end after I did 21 days of the same worksheet I discovered that what he did was unforgivable and what I did as a child not protecting my sister from the truck that ran her over I felt was unforgivable and I let go of that they're both forgivable it's all forgivable we're human beings we do what we do and anyway it pays off so right now you're going to write on these lines you're going to write the things in the story that your interpretation, the, the story you've made up about it. it. Hasn't happened yet, but what you're certain is going to happen. Go, write it down. Oh, and then circle your level of emotion about it. If it's high, you circle high. Oh, this is freaking me out. Nobody ever does meaningless. Why would you write it down if it's meaningless? But anyway, there's three levels of emotion. Go. 
So collapsing the story is to separate the pain from the suffering. Mm -hmm. Reducing the, the story is just to just the facts and feeling the pain of it makes it a whole different thing. There's real pain and then there's story pain. So next we're going to look at our negative core beliefs. And these are just to do with this story. We've all had some of these beliefs a bunch of times in our life, but just related to the story. What you're going to, do, going to do is you're going to go through and read, turn the page. At the top, there's a, thank you. I could just have one of these myself, but that would be too easy. Uh, you're going to read each one, and if it applies to this situation, you're going to put a check in the box. If it doesn't apply, then go on to the next one and read it. If it applies to the situation, put a check in the box. Everybody got it? Yeah. Yes. Life's not fair. Okay. We're going to read the next affirmation, and you're going to check your level of willingness afterwards. <coughs> Ready? I now, I now realize, realize that, that my soul encouraged me to form these beliefs in order to magnify my sense of separation so I could feel it more deeply for my spiritual growth. As I now begin to remember the truth of who I am, I give myself permission to let them go. And I now send love and gratitude to myself and the Supreme Court. Write that in there. For creating, for creating this growth experience, I am willing. OK, and now? We're going to close our eyes and send some love to that Supreme Court. They're probably not feeling a lot of love from everybody, but, but there are some I people. Don't care. <laughs> Judgments are fun. OK, so just close your eyes and really feel it. Picture, picture your least favorite. And just send love and feel love returning back to you, because we are all spiritual beings who love each other deeply. There's God in each of us, even the Supreme Court. <laughs> And when you've had enough, open your eyes. OK, so the patterns. We have that, that uh, person whose mom left. They were abandoned by their girlfriend, their wife. Look at the, the emotional, the, the triggers. Each trigger comes always, you could say, oh, goody, a chance to heal. But this person hasn't yet. Wife divorces him, oh, more, and then someone didn't show up for lunch, and ah! So that's a good clue that now they're ready. My one mentor would call, say that the story is ripe. If a story's not ripe, it's gonna, you're going to have to work hard on it. But this story's ripe once you, once you have it really hit you in the gut. And then you can keep yourself from further tragedy and suffering by healing it, by doing a worksheet. So. <clears throat> Well, let's read this aloud together. I recognize that my spiritual intelligence has created stories like this in the past that are similar in circumstance and feelings to this one in order to magnify the emotional experience of separation that my soul wanted. I see this as evidence that, even though I don't know why or how, my soul has created this particular situation too in order that I learn and grow. Check your level of willingness, and then we're going to do something. So in the pattern, this wasn't the only time they felt abandoned and all those things. This happened, and this happened, and this happened. So you're going to look into your life and see something that has happened before that led you to feel how you feel right now about the Supreme Court. Okay, different people, different events in your life that, ah, oh, that's got a tinge of whatever the feeling is you have about the Supreme Court. And you write down their name, and you can also write uh, what the main feeling was. So go ahead and do that now. Try to find four or five different things, at least, that remind you of your feelings. And go. Okay, so now, number 10. And like I said, when you're doing a worksheet on a specific issue, I would never rush you. But we just want to learn this in, in the time frame we have. So we're going to read number 10 together. 
Ready? I now, I now realize, realize that, that I get upset only when someone resonates in me, those parts of me I have disowned, denied, repressed, and then projected onto them. I see now the truth in the adage, if you spot it, you got it, it's me in the mirror. And as you get deeper and deeper into this work, it gets easier and easier, but it's not easy necessarily in the beginnings. So check up your level and say out loud your level of willingness. I am open. I am willing. Whatever it is. Then we're going to go to number 11. And you're going to write the Supreme Court on the blanks. And together we'll read it. The Supreme Court is reflecting what I need to love and accept in myself. Thank, Thank you, Supreme Court, Court, for this yes, gift. Yes. I am now I willing to take back the projection and own it as a part of my shadow. I love and accept this part of me. And now say out loud your level of willingness. I am. Number 12, same thing. We're going to read it out loud and then check your level of willingness and read aloud your level of willingness. Ready? Even, Even though, though I may not, not understand, understand it all, I now realize that you and I have both been receiving exactly what we each had subconsciously chosen, and we're doing a dance with and for each other to bring us to a state of awakened consciousness. I am willing. Number 13, the same thing. Uh, we're going to put, this, write the Supreme Court on the, what's that? Write the Supreme Court on the blank, and now together we read. I now realize that nothing you, Supreme Court, have done is either right or wrong. I'm able now to release the need to blame you or anyone else. I release the need to be right about this, and I am willing to see the perfection in the situation just the way it is. I am willing. <laughs> and that's fine. Check that and say it. All you need is a kernel. Number 14, out loud, I am willing to see that for whatever reason, my mission or soul contract included having experiences like this and that you and I may have agreed to do this dance with and for each other in this lifetime. If it's for the highest good of both of us, I now release you and myself from this contract. Check your level of willingness. I am. Okay, now, number 15. I release from my consciousness all feelings of, you're going to go back to box 2B and, and read what feelings you wrote there and write them in this box. So I'm scared, I'm angry, I'm whatever you've got written in that box, you're going to put in box 15. It's like doing your taxes. Hmm? <laughs> a little bit, but it, but it pays. It's a gift you give to yourself, not to the government. <laughs> and this is another fun one. So, imagine that you have a fire, campfire in front of you. What you're going to do is you're going to take each belief in your imagination. I release my conscious all feeling of, say, being scared shitless, into the, the universe now, Pew! put it into the fire, watch it go up into the air, gone. Pew! For each feeling, you're going to do that. Release it and watch it, feel it go away. Go. Okay. Pew! Sound effects for it. Well. Everybody finished? Okay. Now this is this is the fun one. We get to reframe the story. Remember my friend who whose parents drug her all over the world and she thought it was just terrible? And then she found out, well wait a minute, she learned some skills through that. Here we're gonna be looking for the gift in the Supreme Court's decision. So we're gonna replace the illusionary story with another story, the radical forgiveness story. They're all stories. The truth is that the Supreme Court made the decision. We, just the facts, man, is the only point of the, the only truth. So it's, we're going to express our willingness to see what 
appeared to have happened is far from being a tragedy. It's exactly what we wanted to experience for our soul growth, and it's absolutely perfect. Right? Click. I'm getting good at this clicking thing. So the victim story, we had blame. It's all their fault. We had, I'm alone and powerless. Oh my god. I'm unsafe. How am I going to be safe? Maniacs, bad things happen to me. That's the victim story. And we're raised to have victim stories. And, and we tell them over and over again, and we feel really powerful. But that doesn't really serve us. So to serve us, we, go to, we collapse the story, see the perfection in it, that it's not to me, it's for me. We trust the universe that it's all for the good. And we surrender to what happens next. We can do it. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. OK, so the story in box one was your victim story based on the old paradigm of reality, the victim consciousness, the, the one that you wrote all about how terrible they are. Now attempt a different perception of the same event, and that's called a reframe, from your new empowered position based on the insights you've experienced as you proceeded through this worksheet. And we've kind of done a fast track, and the insights might not be all that obvious, so you might have to look deeper. Look deeper and find something. And if you can't find something right away, make something up. <laughs> so go. It, it, well, let me tell you some more stuff. It, it could just be a general statement if you were going to wuss out. You could just say, indicate that you know everything's perfect. Or it could be a statement that includes specific to your situation. That is, you can actually see what the perfection is. Often you cannot. Be careful not to do a reframe that's based on world of humanity. Uh, world of humanity is like, they couldn't help it because their mother dressed them funny. You know. So we're not going to make excuses for them. But we're going to find what the, what's the gift to the world, to ourselves, in this story. So go ahead now. And I now realize, write, write it out. What gift have you gotten from the Supreme Court experience? You got to look deep. You're very deep. <laughs> but you can do it. <laughs> There we go. Now you're going to read this aloud and fill in your name. And this is a really good affirmation. When I was in the group for three years, uh, a person in the group typed this out, laminated it, and, and put a hole in it and a little thing so we could attach it to ourselves. And I had this attached to my purse, along with the four emergency steps, which I'll tell you later. But, so this is a great affirmation to use just in life. Together? I completely forgive myself, Kathy Green, and accept myself as a loving, generous, creative being. I release all need to hold on to emotions and ideas of lack and limitation connected to the past. I withdraw my energy from the past and release all barriers against the love and abundance that I know I have in this moment. I create my life and I am empowered to be myself again, to unconditionally love and support myself just the way I am in all my power and magnificence. Woohoo! And so it is. So it's really important to integrate it so that you take it on as a part of who you are. And the reason for all the writing it and the saying it out loud is part of that integration. You can also do breath work, walking, physical work. Um, when you do a, a, a worksheet that's deeply moving to you, you want to make sure you, you do something. And Colin would always say, go home and take an Epsom salt bath to clear all that negative energy off you. OK, here we go, number 18. Together, I now, I now surrender, surrender to the higher power I think of as. So what is your word for the higher power? Write that on the box whatever that is, and trust in the knowledge that this situation will continue to unfold perfectly and in accordance with divine spiritual law. I acknowledge my oneness and feel myself totally reconnected with the love that flows in my life and feel the joy that comes when love is felt and expressed. This is another opportunity to close your eyes and feel that love and joy coming and going and swimming all around you. Go. Ah. Mm. 
Next, we're going to write a note of gratitude to the Supreme Court. Having done this worksheet, I, what is it you realize? What's the gift that this whole fiasco has given to you? Appreciate them for what they've done for you. It wasn't easy. They had to <laughs> dim their light. So go ahead, now write out. So now, the next box is a note of appreciation to yourself. You've been, gone through this whole worksheet. You've opened your mind to ideas you didn't think you wanted to have. Whatever it is you can appreciate about yourself for the work that you've done. A note to myself. Go ahead and write that out. When you finish writing, share it with your partners. Go. Yay. <laughs> next, you're going to read aloud this affirmation for yourself. I recognize that I am a spiritual being having a spiritual experience in a human body. I love and support myself in every aspect of my humanness. Your feelings, your mistakes, your quirks and all that, that's part of being human and that's why we're here. And we can celebrate that. I can't remember people's names. You know, that doesn't make me a bad person. Whatever. Okay. You know what, I've been teaching for a long time, but I haven't done this forever, and I struggle with trying to make something that fit in the time frame, and look at that. We are just right on. I am so happy that you guys did that so well. Yay. So they, I'm gonna give you the emergency four step. We, we, did, um, we did something that happened just recently. Normally, you would not do it just after uh, a trauma happened. But this one, since none of us were directly involved, it was easy to do. But you, you still have something you can do in, a, in an emergency. So I was on my way to a radical forgiveness class. And it was night. And it was a 40 minute drive, because I had to get 40 minutes away from my, um, my ag neighbors, fundamentalist Christians, to find people I spoke the same language as me. And so I, I left early, because I like to be early. And traffic stopped, completely stopped. And I'm like, oh, well, OK, I'm really early. I'll turn up the radio and just chill out, because it was just stopped. But like 10 minutes went by, and it was still stopped. And people were doing crazy things. Like there was a cyclone fence next to it. They, were, they pushed the cyclone fence down to take their car out. It was getting scary. And I'm like, OK, where's the four steps? I had it attached to my purse. OK. Look what I created. And uh -huh, look what I created. and, and uh, we often say, it sucks. You can say whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Look what I created, it sucks. Look at this traffic jam, people going crazy. I notice my feelings and love myself for having them. I'm getting kind of scared, right? And I'm willing to see the perfection of the situation. And I go, perfection? What could be perfect about being stuck on the freeway like this and people going wild? Just then I had the radio turned on. The radio said, anybody who wants tickets to this person's concert who my daughter really loved and she was having a birthday in two weeks, <coughs> Um, call in now. Well, I'm sitting there, not moving. The cell phone's on the chair next to me. I had that radio station on speed dial. I picked up my phone, I pushed the speed dial. I put it up to my ears and they said, you are a winner. And I said, I know. <laughs> so that's, that's if, if I had been suffering and agony, I wouldn't have noticed the contest. I wouldn't have noticed the gift in the situation. I wouldn't have taken advantage of it. So that's just a real demonstration on how, how this works. If you get yourself out of the victim land, you can get yourself into where you're receiving the gifts. No traffic jam, no tickets. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So um, <clears throat> things you could do at home. You can make a forgiveness list of every, every entity, everything that's ever done you wrong and start going through one by one the list. And you will discover that by the time you do five or six, there's hardly any energy left in the rest of them. Because like, like in that pattern, the girlfriend left, the, it's all connected. So when you heal one thing in your string, it takes the power out of all those things, all of them. So eventually you go, I don't even need this list anymore. And your life is better. You don't have to keep calling in the same patterns over and over again to try to get you to heal. So anyway, you, yes? How do you know when you're healed? How do you know when you're healed? Things that triggered you in, in the past, all of a sudden it's like, eh, that's yeah. their problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nothing to do with me. Um, you just don't react and don't get all, you notice, you notice it bit by bit, and all of a you sudden. Realize it's not about you. Oh, and, yeah. And there is one other thing that happens. You get self-righteous by knowing 
and then you put, put it in people's faces. And then you have don't do that. Again. Don't do that. Yeah, you, you won. You, you've cleaned it up. That was if you still had some stuff to clean up. And we all will continue to always have stuff to clean up uh, or, or will ascend. So, and life, that's, life's great that way. It's fun. It's to, to clean things up and to notice, oh my God, like I was at somebody's house and um, a pretty spiritual person and all, and, and I was there for a couple of days. Just, after a couple of days, she goes, Kathy, you don't get upset about things, do you? Sometimes. <laughs> she goes, no, you don't. <laughs> and, and it's true, I don't, I don't easily get upset. When I get upset, I can get really triggered, let me tell you. But then I don't stick with it forever. I, there's a study showed that uh, the average infant has emotions for four, four seconds. Adults have it for three years, maybe the whole rest of their life. And we can reduce, re release it quicker. So it's not that you'll never get upset, but you can get out of it. You don't have to carry it with you. This, I had a slide in there. I don't know what happened to it. But there was this young man who, about 15 years ago, I went to a Challenge Day event. I don't know if you've ever heard of those. It was on, it was on a, a television station. Anyway. It was, it's just for middle school, high school kids to empower themselves, to see the, the then they taught skills. that I, I learned a lot in there myself. Um, anyway, a kid that I met in there has gone on to be a motivational speaker. And he wrote that releasing things is like, you have the emergency brake, if you're holding on to this stuff, it's like driving with the emergency brake on. You're still gonna move, but you're not gonna move as well as you would without it. So as you release the tension, the stress, you can drive with your full power instead of being held back by all these oh, oh victim stories. Mm -hmm. And you have the power to change that. It doesn't seem like that before you get it. We were trained to blame people and we could train ourselves not to. We have yeah. that power. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank you, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you are awesome. And that water is awesome.